It was a lazy, sunny day in Seattle. I was visiting my niece. She was seven years old, the same age I was when I was cut. I remembered the emerald green carpet, the jumbo-sized tobler on my aunt gave me as a bribe. She led me to her basement clinic in India. It was just the two of us. And without warning, she laid me on my back, she spread my legs apart, and I blacked out. When it was over, I sat in a corner with the candy bar, feeling sick to my stomach. I saw my aunt sitting with my cousin laughing and pointing at me. When I confronted my parents years later, they were furious. I learned she did this without their consent. Watching my niece reminded me of the me before I was cut. So confident, so self-assured. In that moment, I felt a wave of emotions. Gratitude she would never experience what I went through and motivation to act. My father told me, the only way to spark change is to speak up. I worried all of my other identities would be erased. Painter, binge traveler, US diplomat, and proud Texan. When people Google searched my name, would this squeamish acronym be the only thing that would pop up? I eventually allowed my story to be published in The Guardian. It sparked a conversation within my community and even within my own family. My brother was with me that summer, and earlier this year, he launched a campaign to push legislators in Washington state to ban FGM. He wasn't able to protect me from my aunt, but his voice has the potential to break future cycles of violence.